Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the next uh, Tecla Live workshop. Uh, today, uh, today's topic is create your own Tecla custom components. And we have today with us Tauto Vidas. Hello, Tauto Vidas, can you hear me? Hello, everybody. Hello, Chris. Yes, I can, uh, I can hear you. Uh, and as always, if you please uh, let us know if you can hear us well. We have already 100 people, uh, that's a lot, uh, that would like to hear about custom components uh, in uh, Grasshopper. Uh, we have Nuno, uh, Nuno from Portugal. Uh, nice to see you. We have already some questions, uh, that's good. But first of all, uh, please, uh, please write if you can hear and see us well. We have Craig. Uh, nice to see you, Craig, here. Uh, we have Pulari. Hi, good evening from EXB. Hmm. Where is EXB? Maybe do you, you know? Well, maybe? D no. DXB. Okay, <laughs> DXB. Okay, so Dubai, <laughs> I assume. <laughs> Hi, Craig. I can see you, hear you well. Hello from Ireland. Uh, great. Uh, we have already some questions. Maybe we can already start, like, jump into the questions, or maybe it's too early. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> okay, we have Victor from Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine. Uh, hello, uh, Victor. Uh, Nuna is uh, with us. Uh, of course, we are going. I'm going to mark all this uh, question uh, before we are going to answer the question. If we are going to need Rhino license, so let's explain to people what is Grasshopper component uh, inside uh, inside Tecla. But of course, we are going to uh, answer that. Uh, uh, so where are you based right now? Because uh, because our time uh, schedule, we are starting at 3 p.m. Central European time. And usually I, I try to have this workshop, uh, Tecla workshop are two, at 2 p.m. Central European time. Uh, but we be agreed that we start one hour later because most, most of the time you're based in US, right? So we try to find the hour that you are not going to stream from us at 6 uh, a.m. <laughs> at the uh, US, US time. So where are you based right now? Yeah, so so at this moment, I live in a, in a US, in a Maryland state, so it's East Coast, mm -hmm. uh, but... Now I'm visiting uh, my family, and of course I'm from Lithuania, so now I'm sitting at home in Lithuania. Uh, so when when we uh, had to uh, save the date with the time slot, so we were like, be careful, and that's why we decided that's two three p.m. So it will be seven in the U.S. So okay, so it was like a, a something in the middle that we can meet. Uh, so I hope that uh, some people are not waiting one hour and are get used to that. We have we are having this uh, workshop uh, at two p.m. Okay, we have more people. Uh, you have Vertex from Philippines, two p.m. here uh, from Peru. Peru, Juan, nice to see you. We have Norway. Hi, Mario. Uh, people from uh, Iceland, uh, even. So yeah. So as always, from whole the for whole the globe. Uh, so maybe I maybe you can just. Uh, I'm always wondering. Today we are going to talk about custom uh, component Grasshopper component in Tecla. So it's a little bit different than the Live Link. Uh, but Live Link is for sure more known uh, if you are a Tecla user. Uh, if you are using uh, Grasshopper Tecla Live Link already, uh, please write in this on the uh, on the chat. Uh, so we will see afterwards. Maybe we can also see uh, the differences about the Grasshopper components and the Live Link. Maybe some of you will change and will start to make own make your own tools. Uh, what about you, Dr. Vides? Uh, are you more into Grasshopper component or Tecla Live Link? What you are your uh, your preferences? Of course, I'm using both. Uh, if it's something smaller and not so scalable, more is I like Tecla Live Link. But if you want to distribute to your um, colleagues, that's Tecla Grasshopper component. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, so you are working in uh, Docker, right? Uh, how many of you are using Grasshopper? Uh, because you are mostly using Tecla, as I suppose. So yeah. Tecla, of course, is our main Beam software. Uh, but for Grasshopper, I will introduce a bit of our team, you know, like, but we have mm -hmm. some users. But uh, uh, six years ago, I started using alone and tried to, you know, convince more and more people. So 
let's say, 10 people maybe already using on different, you know, occasion. But for a Grasshopper component, that's like all our Beam users. Mm -hmm. So actually, we can say that most of the people in Docker uses the power of Grasshopper. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to your presentation. We have Mario. Mario is using the uh, di live link. We have Victor uh, as well. So that, good to hear uh, that uh, we are going to talk a little bit from the different perspective about uh, Grasshopper. OK, so as always, uh, with 3 PM Central European time, let's start it. If you can leave the like or subscribe to this channel, it will really help me uh, to reach more people, more engineers willing to work with uh, Tecla and Grasshopper. And today workshop, it will be one and a half hour. Uh, so it will be with the Q&A session about 90 minutes. Uh, we will try to not exceed this uh, time. Uh, recording will be available to watch later and will, will be sent to register email. If you are watching that on LinkedIn, for example, uh, for example, Maria is from, uh, from Estonia. Uh, Maria uh, is watching that on LinkedIn. Uh, so if you are still not registered, so please go to learngrasshopper.com slash workshop Tecla uh, component. Uh, Tauta Vidas uh, prepared for us uh, some Grasshopper uh, file that to share, that maybe try some components. We'll see. I'm not sure which one uh, you choose, but let's let's keep it a secret. Uh, but for sure, you can, we can. Uh, uh, he will share it, and so we can start uh, doing your own uh, own component. And as always, this workshop is uh, uh, we are doing that for you. So the most important thing is that if you have any question uh, questions any things that you are wondering or not understand. So please don't hesitate. Uh, it's open area that you can just write the comments. I'm I'm seeing all of your comments if you are watching that on Facebook, uh, YouTube, or LinkedIn. So please uh, share your thoughts uh, with us. Uh, so benefits from joining this workshop. First, we will learn how to create the custom components in Tecla with uh, Grasshopper and maybe also get the tips. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, I, I have seen some of your uh, presentation on uh, Tecla and Trimble. Uh, and I like like this dimensioning slide, di dimensioning line, and uh, direct modification. Uh, so I'm really glad to see you that you can also uh, share that uh, tips. Uh, so we started this year uh, in January with the first workshop. It was about five steps to uh, start with Grasshopper in Tec Tecla Lightning. Uh, then we went into more uh, automating reinforcement with the Lightning. So it was the second workshop. Uh, and now we are in the third uh, that we are going to talk about using uh, Grasshopper components. So we, as you can see, we are going into more, more and more uh, advanced, uh, advanced things. Uh, so let's uh, start it. So maybe you can see that we are not going to talk about the Tecla Live Link. The Tecla Live Link, uh, this uh, ribbon with lots of components that you can create your uh, columns, beams, you can modify the data. Uh, but the Grasshopper components is actually that you can create your components by Grasshopper. Uh, in the old days, the only one's possibility was to use C Sharp and to access the uh, Tecla Open API. Now you can do almost the same. Can I say the same? No, for sure it's some limitation. <laughs> of course. <laughs> But mostly, mostly, most of the things that you can do without knowing the C sharp, we know that uh, Tecla Open API uh, is uh, really well written. Um, but you, you have to know C sharp, and uh, being a professional, being master in C sharp takes time. So Grasshopper is a really like a really uh, hanging low hanging fruit that we can go and just write our first uh, components. So on the Tecla warehouse. Uh, if you will write in the searching box uh, Grasshopper, so actually you will find two different, uh, actually there are more because we have also campus version, but in general we have one which is called Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. And this is where we are connecting Tecla with our Grasshopper Rhino. So Rhino and Grasshopper, they are talking into, with to, together about the geometry, about the data, and they can send information to Tecla. And actually, they, are, they can also retrieve information from Tecla into Grasshopper. And everything is, uh, is uh, showing live. 
So if we were going to move some beam in Grasshopper or Rhino, this beam is going to move in Tecla. So we have this uh, interaction. But the second one, Tecla component, uh, which uh, with this uh, second symbol, it's more when we are going to expand our application and components. So we are installing there a component, a component that we can create our user uh, interface inside Tecla. So all these sliders, all these values here, we can set up through Grasshopper. This is example uh, from Sebastian uh, webinars about the spiral, spiral uh, staircase that we can set up. Uh, set up every parameter so we can see that we are not seeing any spaghetti monster. Uh, our spaghetti monster is hidden uh, right here as our link to Grasshopper uh, file. So uh, it's like uh, taking all your rubbish under the carpet, <laughs> as, you can, uh, as you can imagine. So you're putting and uh, you only see user uh, uh, user interface. And actually, we had already a question from, let me see, it was from Ashley. Do you have to have Rhino in order to use these components? Once they are created, can they be used by other Stekla users who do not have Rhino? Maybe you can answer uh, this question. Yeah, of quickly. course. I, I can answer. And you need to have a license. It's They call it Rhino inside, even if you're not seeing it and it's running in background. But you need to have license to use Grasshopper component for Tecla. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not like the same with the C sharp. If you are going to create this component with C sharp, you don't have to. You don't need to any additional license. But there is also advantages of that. That maybe we can also go uh, to that because you can also adjust this to your needs. If you have your C sharp component. So it's really blocked. You have to really go inside and uh, and to develop. Maybe you need to contact developer. It, of course, it takes time. If you are using this Grasshopper component, you can just go inside, just make a, a change through some few components, and uh, it's it's much much faster. Okay, so that was introduction. So I hope it's a little bit more understandable what Stoutovidas is going to talk about today. Uh, so let's go to your presentation. Uh, so maybe you can introduce a little bit uh, about Doca uh, and how you are working with actually Tecla uh, in Doca because it's really interesting topics. I always see your visualization like this one with this tunnel uh, and it's like you are designing that, like mo mostly the formwork, right? But for yes. me, it's not the formwork. It's like a completely new structure. <laughs> <laughs> so j just to say very fast, you know, like with this, your question that uh, we most of the time need to analyze structure and apply our product. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but I guess I can start, yeah? Yeah, uh, you, can, you, yeah. you can start with your presentation. Yeah, OK, cool. So uh, let's go and see or I can even okay so just a bit of information about uh, myself uh, I'm beam coordinator in Docker USA located in Maryland uh, leading development of Tecla uh, in you know in Docker and heavily also focus on parametric modeling and third let's say my my task or, or or where I spend a lot of time of course a lot of training support and also just to help you know, so I have eight years experience in Formwork and six years experience in Tecla, Rhino, and Grasshopper. And my background is bachelor degree in civil engineering and master degree in structure engineering in uh, at Vilnius Gediminas Technical University in Lithuania. So let's go to next. If you if you will work in Europe, your title will be more like computational designer or maybe <laughs> developer. We we talked about that before the live. That beam coordinator. Uh, I I see what you are doing at your work, and I will say more that you are a computational engineer. But uh, if you prefer beam coordinator, would stay with beam coordinator. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. It's it's you know like. Uh... I do a lot of different things and it will be nice to do just one task, but <laughs> life is life. <laughs> so about my company, if you think about concrete and just a bit bigger project, most of the time you're here at Doca, uh, we do everything from single, uh, like just foundation wall slabs, uh, like uh, to very like uh, 
uh, infrastructure of big projects like tunnels, bridges, or dams. It could be stadiums or even Burj Khalifa highest building worldwide. And here is a Docker. So Docker clients. Uh, we have companies in a five, five continents in a 60 countries, 160 location worldwide, and close to 7,000 employees. And like I say, based in Maryland, I moved it three years ago. And now we have nine branches there, two additional support branches. One is in Austria, and our old DOCA headquarters is in Austria. And you can see a pictures uh, of our 12 Beam users. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so just a bit our team, and uh, like the six years ago, I was first who using Tecla in a, in a company, and mm -hmm. after a few years, Juan also joined uh, Tecla Tecla area, so he know Revit and Tecla, and in this last year, we like let's say double uh, double our team, so we have also Cloudemar. Uh, who know uh, Revit and Dynamo, Diego, who focusing a lot on Tecla custom components, and Ryan, uh, Ryan, who now uh, focusing on Tecla IPA. And additional, we have another team in a headquarter in Austria. Richard is the head of that department, and have Thomas, who focusing also on IPA. And Marek and Gabor, we hire both these uh, guys who already have Tecla experience and give us also a lot to our team. And how, and how you started and how you started with Grasshopper? Uh, because did you know did you know already Grasshopper before uh, from previous work uh, experience? So really, that's an interesting story because when I study my master, I have Erasmus in Portugal and in Porto city, and there uh, one uh, professor showed me Dynamo at that moment, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and was always have this idea that that could be a future. And immediately when I have opportunity, when I move to Austria to work, I focus on Tecla and Grasshopper at the same time. I see, I see. So standard standard story. Mm, standard <laughs> story, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so the six years ago, uh, then we, you know, like see that, oh, we need a Beam software in a company. And of course, Formwork is really good in Tecla. So the first problem, what we have, it was how to bring all our 6,000 uh, items or custom components in a Tecla. And not to only import export, but to include also some placing logic uh, to create friend friendly dialog boxes and you know just to how to distribute everything. So uh, we faced that pro problem for a really long time and with every you know, years we improving more and more. So one of the big, biggest thing what we did, we change from the shapes to everything natively. It means mm -hmm. we're not using any more uh, Tecla Cola shapes or mesh, let's say if you're importing, but we really remodel everything with native elements, beam plates with profiles and so on and so on. Yeah, what was the what was the decision back that? Uh... Yeah, so the biggest uh, problem, or let's say what we don't figure out how to optimize and increase performance is because of drawings. So of course we find out more things, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, later on. But like the main decision that formwork was very slow in a drawing mode. Mm -hmm. If you really want to show all these huge models and yeah. that like. And I can say example, you know, like before was like five minutes to open drawing and now like 10 se seconds. So that was like 80% is just because of the uh, of, uh, shapes or. Yeah, so it's mostly because maybe of the mesh, right? It's more complicated to go through the drawings that maybe they need to hide all the lines that are not visible and they are just heavier elements, right? Yeah, like this 2018, 19, we even don't have option to check or is solid or is not solid. Mm -hmm. uh, we try a lot of different options how to convert because, of course, we're converting from AutoCAD. Uh, or we also have inventor files, but but let's say we don't figure out the best way, you know, like that uh, all mesh is closed, Tecla understand it perfectly, and even with that, it was slow. 
Yeah, but what about the elements that really cannot be modeled with uh, native elements? Do you is it something like have you been in this situation, or is always uh, possible to do with the plates, columns, beams, and so on? Until now, I think we model everything. Like we're not faced with one item that is too too complicated. It just depends on the time and uh, how much you want to simplify. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but. I not include in the trainings this this topic, but one one uh, topic what we also now investigating a lot is maybe we don't want to use any more a lot cuts, but to use more holes option mm -hmm. with the, mm -hmm. you know bolts, especially 2024 what they released today. They also include the oh, new. Oh, it was today. Today. Yeah, it's a big they, release. They re released two or three hours ago. <laughs> oh, nice. So we can we can uh, announce that. So you are quick that you already checked what what was what was inside. <laughs> you are <course>. waiting. <laughs> you were you were waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm participating in that feedback sessions uh, mm -hmm. to test you know uh, functionalities and what they think to to implement in the future. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what I say, shapes is a big one. Uh, of course, we start adding more and more UDAs, user-defined mm -hmm. attributes. Uh, with that, of course, snapping points and lines, what you see soon in a live live presentation. Uh, of course, including more views and drawing filters that you know just to have a better concept or all all together, you know, like to give our users who start designing in a tech club. And also from history, that first few years we think, oh, uh, Tecla have like this advanced custom component development, and we really push it hard to see like uh, what we can get. So you can see this is example where even linking Excel files. Uh, but very fast we understand that that's not perfect, and we need something more. Mm -hmm. And around similar time, if I'm not uh, I'm not sure, I guess 2018, Tecla also developed a placing tool for former. So they tried to convince more and more people to, you know, like to design former. It was like really good development for our walls. And that also helped us at that moment. And in the future, they also did for a slab. But, mm -hmm. you know, like we have not only walls on slab, but like I said, tunnel bridges, <laughs> dams, and so on and so on. So that was also not enough. And Last before grasshopper topic, uh, one more step like this also around two years ago when we introduced the environment, what I guess most advanced Tecla companies already uh, doing, uh, that also helped us a lot, you know, like to convince more people to use Tecla. To, and of course, when we have environment, we include also our interface, what people already use with the other softwares. And you can see here what we including how to arrange and call this uh, files and documents. But and I think that all the mm -hmm. tools that was previously uh, implemented before Grasshopper was working with the just standard uh, rectangular, standard building, standard formworks. I can imagine that example that showed you showed with the tunnel. Uh, it's what's not not that possible, but not that easy. Maybe it was possible, but maybe not that easy. So then you uh, you experiment. You started experimenting with Grasshopper. That's right. That's right. And uh, so I also put few few points here. So in early stages, we more just looking at uh, shaping thin timbers and special steel parts because even with a sophisticated library, it's easy to you know like to use Grasshopper with Tecla. Mm -hmm. uh, after we start simulating some formwork systems, analyzing more and more complex geometries, like you say about tunnels, uh, creating one-time solutions when it's not worth maybe to invest a lot of time to create a placing tool, but of course to speed up somehow process. And the last, and what I, of course, in a live demo I showed the most was developing placing tools with Grasshopper component. So let's jump to a few projects. I include a few projects just to show. So like I said, with the shaping timbers, it was like, I guess, five years ago, it was all the shaping timbers was different. But of course, that club, it's like help us a lot with this project. Mm -hmm. And next one is cooling tower. So all this cooling tower of the geometry is not the same, but similar. So just to simulate our formwork system, uh, to see how it works, or in the middle on the end, we don't have any problem. That was also really big help for with using Grasshopper and 
and Rhino. And another example could be for this one also high rise anchor climbing simulation to check, you know, like which system will work better. When, and... I look at, when I look at these drawings and the model of the formworks, they are sometimes really more complicated than the structure itself. <laughs> oh, it could be very complicated. Some systems, I will show one also. So it's it's really like so, very, very complicated. <laughs> so, so I can even see the uh, DVG uh, AutoCAD drawings here. <laughs> So, so really here, what I'm showing is, is Rhino and it's overlay oh, okay. uh, 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 grass, uh, DVG. And we're just mm -hmm. comparing or the script is working like like our, at that moment, engineers design an AutoCAD. Oh, cool. So it's a kind of quality assurance between AutoCAD and Grasshopper? Yeah, so like, if to explain very, like with few sentences, you know, like in AutoCAD, people copy uh, all our solutions, like let's say in AutoCAD, and they come in the middle and say, oh, something is wrong. So they need to redo all the steps, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, with Rhino, you can just use a slider and grasshopper and get that one immediately different, like with one millimeter or one inch, you know, mm -hmm. like <laughs> different result. Uh, so next one, uh, what I say before about... Uh, a bit more complex, uh, where is maybe not a placing tool, but all of this structure, what you see here is everything grasshopper. So you can imagine even in, in, in Tecla, I mean, move, rotate could work, you know, like, but that's a lot of like placing, uh, like uh, difficulties could, could be for engineer. Mm -hmm. So so this is, this time, and, and because we did talk about this one, that's more like Tecla live link a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's just a bit, grasshopper component like for example this tower here and of course if some statical things change uh to update a model it's it's a big big benefit to use rhino and grasshopper with tecla and the last one and that's like scp project is one of our climbing system but what i say before that we use grasshopper component uh, more and more to create our placing tools, which one we don't have, let's say, in a AutoCAD or another uh, software. Uh, so I think for for slides, that's all. Uh, do we want to answer some questions before we jump to live? Or... Yeah, I, yeah, we can. Uh, Ashley already have a question about Doca. Are you hiring? <laughs> <laughs> of course, we always hire. <laughs> so should, they, so should people just write message directly, uh, directly to you, or uh, <laughs> we can? Uh, I will post, I guess, you know, like a, a page where where is best way to apply for a job. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan, he's recognizing the photo from Austin. Uh, oh, we nice. have uh, uh, we have some uh, people. Actually, we have the Rans Hi from Belgium using the Grasshopper component already with Docker components. Uh, so uh, the Docker components uh, is the library. Is it where people can download and where they can use it? How they can use it? So uh, we have uh, published everything in Tecla Warehouse, but now it's time when we want to really upgrade a lot you know like because like i say we change everything from shapes to native ones and this one is not published yet mm -hmm. so so that's of course it's also on me that we be pushing this one to do a best way uh, is there gonna be placement tools for beams in the future um... uh, I we already have some. It's it depends, you know, like uh, how we can share it. Let's say. <laughs> uh, let me see. Question to you: uh, In what program are you doing structure calculation calculation for these drawings? Um, um, so uh, we have some our internal uh, software uh, and also I think a stad stad. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah. yeah, but like we have different groups who are responsible just for static calculations. So. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I have I seen we have more questions, but they are more uh, technical. Uh, so maybe we should open. Like uh, I really always love to see uh, Tecla and Grasshopper live link so people can see. Uh, we can see that we have Tecla uh, open. Which version is it? It's not 2024. Uh, 
<laughs> no, no, it's 2023. And I really, just to make sure that everything will be okay, I downgrade to 1.3 Grasshopper. Now maybe it's it's even a good idea to show it. Uh, extension manager. Um... So, so it's 1.3, and I, I also using 1.15 live link. Mm -hmm. If I can, I don't know if I can show it easily in in here. Yeah, 1.15. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start and. Uh, so let's start but, maybe from maybe start with the beginnings, right? So you, you have to in order to work with a Grasshopper component, you you need to have first Tecla Lightning installed, as you said, you have a 1.15 version, and you have to have this Grasshopper component that it's for free, right? Download it for free. Both you can find in a Tecla warehouse. And it's mm -hmm. TSA file, so you don't need admin rights or something. You just I, I have on a bell, but if you go to normal warehouse, of course, you will also can find it. Grasshopper mm -hmm. Tecla Live Link and also uh Grasshopper custom component. And after that, like I show, you can check an extension manager. And when mm -hmm. you want to trigger, you will normally will find it in application and components. This is here. And for Correct. Yeah, from live link. Uh, let me see now with this three screens. Oof. Uh, so and here you need to copy to the to, 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 to the special folder and a component folder. Mm -hmm. um, just one file like this one, and don't forget always to go properties and unblock if you have the situation. Correct. And. And after that, of course, you can just check or you have a right version um, uh, and, you know, years and version. Okay. Um, so we can maybe start with some simple uh, Grasshopper components. Yeah, I, I prepare a lot. So if you see that I'm going to, to fast, too slow, or just let me know. You know? <laughs> I will. I will. Uh, yeah, like, let, let me know about how is we going with time. Um, so like I say, uh, you can trigger from here. I can, of course, just click two times and get that interface. And normally, when you start the first time, you will get something like this. Now define loaded, and it's just this interface. And to trigger Grasshopper scripts, you need to predefine some files. So first, I just show how a component works. And after, with the same component, I ju jump in a live link just to explain what inputs, output, and what's going on, you know, like how this two connected really. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So like I said, I uh, I need to link it. And I have in my model, Grasshopper Workshop 2024, and I always like to call it GH. Uh, and in here I have different scripts. So let's start, of course, with the Grasshopper basic ones. And you wait a few seconds and you get different interface depends what you did in a script. Uh, so, and after that, how you can trigger the grasshopper. So we already, let's say loaded. I, I we also ha have in a ribbon. So in the future I will trigger from a ribbon, but this first time I will show, you know, that you can just click one time and here on the bottom left, you will see what you need to do. So in this case, I don't know if it's easy to see, but it's say, Pick mm -hmm. a Tecla point. So I just picking point. The next one is a pick a Tecla polyline. Let's go from, let's say here and here, middle mouse button. Next one is pick a beam and pick a plate and pick a component. And let's wait a few seconds. And so you're tag... defining, so you're defining all these steps by yourself, right? That's right. I, I define that in a, in a file. What is my input? And after that, when you trigger Grasshopper component, Grasshopper component automatically ask by from top to bottom what, what you should reference. And if you would like to switch between tools, you are just, just replacing the Grasshopper file. So you are always using this Grasshopper component that we see on the right, but you are just replacing the Grasshopper file that you have prepared on your computer, or and maybe if you are working with the your colleagues so maybe you have your own server right like people can use the same how do you mm -hmm. how, uh, how yeah. do you assure that people are using the same component yeah. 
So then I mentioned before about Docker environment. One of the things mm -hmm. what are we also having, we having this small interface where we can choose our systems. And with this system, I, I don't at this moment I not click this one, but it's automatically copy uh, that files to my model folder to GH. And you mm -hmm. see, I can have a lot, but of course, it's not a big deal that you just take that file and copy here. I always recommend to use in a model folder in that case, you know, if you use model sharing and so on and so on, and other users also have the same version. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I insert something like this, it's mean I referencing things. And in this case, I even reference five. It's just I showing this basic one that later on I can reference on all our different systems. But just to show a few flexibility how it works. For example, uh, when I did reference to, ge to geometry, let's say this time for a beam, if I move now this one somewhere, the script rerun and adjust one more time. Mm -hmm. And you see it's already rotating different way. Or let's say with component, what is also could be very, uh, let's do maybe something not so. So it's also orientating that way. So, so you are so you are just uh, modifying direct. You are making direct modification of the component or the plate, and this will automatically adjust without rerunning the script. It's really you triggering script, and script is rerunning. Okay. So it's like recalculating. Um, but you can see that uh, it could be different inputs. What you can trigger, and uh, so like you say, it could be direct modification or it could be also interface in grasshopper custom component mm -hmm. and for example now i have very simple one i just need to select and say let's say 36 inches or three feet you know like go z direction and i already update my script with all this objects going up or even you know like i can say from let's say h20 beams what this this our yellow ones uh docker products Let's change to something else. And in a few seconds, it's already updating to our uh, frames. So let me just refresh and click modify. So just want to show that this is how Grasshopper component works. And now I will open live link and we repeat the same with live link just to see what is different between these two or so, how. So it will be the, so it will be exactly the same script. That's right. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm doing here, let's, I think I already have it here. Let's close this one and open. And this Grasshopper basic, let's open Rhino. And I just drag and drop. Okay. And now, let me maybe at least to do something. It's not that like easy, this. right? On the one screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you remember, uh, it's jumping a bit, but uh, what I did, I reference point, polyline, beam, uh, plate, and component, all of this one, and I just get the same custom component. At this moment, it's orange and red because I'm not referencing everything, and I can repeat the same one more time very fast, just, you know, a point, script triggered, and place the same what we did there. Uh, polyline, totally the same let's say some random okay let's do with the beam it's also appearing there mm -hmm. and let's do it with play two and last one also here so what you saw with the components but i also move up or you know like change from one to another that's what I also include here. Just normal panel input and also drop down menu with you know zero and one. And that's super simple if some people have you know like uh, a bit knowledge. So it's just point SDL, uh, mm -hmm. create one line. Uh, second one is two segments of a line. Third one deconstruct beam and get a curve and offset. Just not that not overlap with that. Uh, that divide surface. And also last one, deconstruct my component and and create inputs, you know, like with uh, this guy here. And I just say five steps, you know, like five components. Mm -hmm. And I just merge all together. 
and I using this this normal component. I give a name. First one h20, second, you know, um, frame. So if it's not zero, it's one. It's that's mm -hmm. another one. I use all my curves, and we always try to use just uh, middle top middle for our all components. Uh, so I also said that's my position. So and this is that this file I save. So of course you need to just know one more thing if you want to include uh, inputs. You need to give group and with group say t dot or tab I guess dot. Uh, and because if I for example not include this one, it will not appear. It always be just mm -hmm. zero. But so it will be, up, so it's, it have to be included in the group with the specific name. That's right. Yep. And the order and the order matters here. I, I I suppose that is going from the top to bottom. That's right. That's also also for inputs uh, mm -hmm. from top to bottom and also like the Z and H20 beams. So now, for example, just to show one, I just saved this one. Now, if I trigger one more time, Grasshopper, let's. I mean, it's already automatically updated. So now, uh, Z is below. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so any more questions about just totally basic things? Because next no. plan is already no, shown we something. Can, <laughs> we can go to more like we know that I think uh, we already see the difference between the live link and the grasshopper components that people without uh, grasshopper skills can just reuse it without op even. Uh, do you do you need Rhino uh, opened? right using a uh, grasshopper component no no you no. you not need but you need to just take care about uh this installation and also live link first time mm -hmm. you know yeah but uh, how is how, how does it work um, technically is it opening rhino in the background yeah it's silence mode rhino inside and it's not mm -hmm. rhino inside is not only for tech lab they have even more you know like software this technology but this is like really easy to, to use. <laughs> no need to yeah. set a lot of things at all. Uh, yeah, I said we don't have question. Of course, we have more question that people are just uh, writing. If we shuffle the choice, then is it working? Yes, that's that's too. I mean, uh, you remember the Tecla point was on the top and my component mm -hmm. was on the end. So very easily, I just move here, click this one. Trigger one more time component. Let's refresh. And now I click, and here now it's a pick component. Uh, and just. Yeah. So you are starting with the first component, which yeah. is in the. And in now, the top. That's right. And now it's a pick a point, pick a polyline, and so on and so on. So that's how simple it's it's controlling what inputs you want. I mean, from my experience, it's better just to limit it to one or two inputs mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. for users they don't want to open you know like script and see what's going on they just want to use this dialog box like plugin or or like like placing tool uh, mario uh, hi mario uh, uh, end user would insert the component the same way uh, yes so yeah correct uh, let me see uh, how to make some inputs active uh, grade out depending on a uh, value of a previous input. Mm, I, if I understand correctly, at this moment is not possible to activate or deactivate uh, inputs. You need to go to Grasshopper and do it manually, just exclude from group or include in a group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and even this drop down menu is also not. Uh, possible at this moment to uh, say gray out or like like in Tecla custom components that you can say that if this case you can only click this one or if another different one. Uh, let me see. I think we have more question about the bamboo structures. I, I never work, but I, I know that uh, Tecla can be used for wood structure. Uh, but does it allow to set properties? I think you can set the properties, whatever you would like to, because you can define your materials. Uh, and if the Tecla works with more organic structures. Um, this question, it's also can work with organic structure, but it's not like a NERPS curse. It always transforming into polyline. So it's more like engineering type software. 
so you, it depends what kind of uh, accuracy, accuracy you would like to have. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, <laughs> how to set up a default value? Uh, so whatever you leave, for example, in this case, I say zero. So mm -hmm. default volume is zero. If I say 12, just save it. Okay, so it, it will, so the 12 will be appeared as a... Uh, let's refresh. It's 12. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, last question before going to more advanced. Uh, I have input A and input B. And in my Grasshopper component, I want to see just an informative window of a result. Uh, a times B. How to do it? Uh, so... Uh, really, it's possible also to do because the, uh, now in Grasshopper custom component, we have a message option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. Uh, so even if you not place anything, uh, you can see output. We can look a bit later on this one. Or I mean, you can just create a number with lines or or beams if you want to do that way in a 3D environment. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go. I will save some questions for the next one, but we can go to some formwork. Okay, cool. So let's start with a 10K simple tower. Uh, and let me just grab a script. Of course, I can. you can click two times and get immediately this interface. Or if you, you know, like don't have it at that moment, uh, you can click from ribbon, get this one. And in that case, you, you need to go three dots and say, this is, for example, 10K uh, mm -hmm. towers. So if you already place one time, it's same like placing tool. If somebody familiar with wall or slab, you click two times and you already get the same information what, what you use for that script. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one, I not go with all functionality because we really have a lot of you know like different scripts, but just some ideas where you guys can look and say, oh, that could be maybe useful and I can use in my workflows. So of course, first one, very simple, like two points, like I show in a start, or just line, one click, second one. Second even is just direction. Let's say like mm -hmm. a vector. You click it, and in a few seconds, you will get uh, the tower. So how it works uh, that uh, when you place, you base on this logic on top. And in the end of this live demo, I will open also this, this script and go through different areas and say, hey, this is how we create the Z letters, which this one we're using for example, for a drawings, or how we did this one uh, reference text, you know. Yeah, I, and, this, is, this is what I really like here, this the reference text about the dimensioning. It's because uh, before uh, I was modeling like a Tecla objects to, <laughs> and it took a lot of memory. But now you can see, I don't know if everybody can just zoom it. It's also in the vertical. Uh, we have also fits because you are working in the metric uh, metric system. Uh, yeah, but imperial. we have also in the... Hmm? In sorry, imperial. Imperial, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Correct, imperial system. So we have on the horizontal and also in the vertical uh, direction, right? Yeah, that's right. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's maybe a bit harder to see this way, but... Uh, of course, you don't want to always click two times and just see what's going on. You know, like now in two thousand in one fifteen, I guess they already Sebastian introduced some lines. But the mm -hmm. problem that if you interrupt, it's gone. And I like that this is appear always. Another advantage because we talk about this one that this is not appearing in a drawings. That's just mm -hmm. normal, normal uh, construction object and polyline or line. But yeah, so just you we, know, like we have already all... we have already comment like reference dimensioning is fantastic. I miss that in Tecla so much after Revit. So now, so now we have it. That's right. Uh, yeah. So just you know, like just to come back to this one, what I say like, with the basic one. Now I have some interface here. Uh, I mean, I can change, for example, offset if I want, but I just show something simple like I can say, oh, maybe I don't need a second frame. And of course, script rerun. But you can see that it's just a few seconds and it's it's gone. You know, like, or I can just say maybe it should be not four, but uh, not, sorry, not eight or empty, but six. And it's after a few seconds, it's rerun. And same like I did with another one. 
it's also over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did a lot of things, you know, like that I say that I will show, but in the future, you know, like for, for, for when we check more in details about this one, but it's also possible to automatically say what is hide, maybe exclude some, maybe you want manual to change, and of course, a lot of things to change heads, foods, and so on and so on, or maybe not place at all something. Mm -hmm. So that's the simplest example, and I, I guess I forgot to mention about this one, what I just say about Yeah, output. this is the message. This is the message, yeah. right? That's right. So you can see that frame spacing, 4 and 6. I don't think so that I can make it bigger, but uh, height is also four, 4 and 4. And I also include some extensions, uh, 11, 18, 18, or 7, 8. So, so you can basically send whatever information that you would like to like, uh, maybe let's say volume or the price. Maybe can you also like make a calculation for the grasshopper and just give you price here in this in this moment? That's right. That's right. It's possible to do that. Really, I um, really like it. I, I, re I already see lots of uh, application of that. <laughs> okay, so let's let's go with the second one. Uh, let's click get. And you can see I getting just file and I always refresh just that we I hope sure that no nothing happened, you know, like uh but I, I mean I can also get and just place and it will be totally the same. But this first, like I say, is just two points. I insert and I show direction. This one is very similar, stacks with hours, that's an over hour product, but in this case it's important the length. So now if I say where is my perpendicular 25, let's say feet. So now the script automatically try to understand what is the best configuration of all these metric options to mm -hmm. minimize, you know, like uh, area or length. So, and of course I have also this 12 and 12 here. If you snap on the edge of a slab, that, you know, like your your leg not be in a half of, of edge or something. Yeah, so, yeah I see. Mm -hmm. And few things, so for example, uh you you don't want something so i figure out that this is super easy you know if you just say my static i'll say that don't use more than two meters so you can just say it false everything is recalculating we get one more three thousand of course i can also make it false now i want to show also very good use cases that for example how we can com combine this messages with the placing tool so you can see my order is two meters, two meters, and three meters. And here I output that. So I can just grab this one, copy, paste, and immediately say, nope, maybe I want this one in the middle and this one, you know, like to the end. So because no. And let me click modify. Now you will see that in a few seconds, it's already recalculating. So sometimes okay. if, mm -hmm. uh, so Sorry. if I understand correctly, so first you defined uh, your perpendicular line and it was uh, calculating the best option, possible option. Uh, and then you can just uh, with uh, see uh, what was the result uh, with the output and maybe you can also overwrite. Yes, that's right. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, like if you just, just say, no, I want only uh, 2000 and 2000, uh, that's all. That also works in this frame spacing, but I always give option first user to say, oh, this is best option, what you plan mm -hmm. to do. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so, and of course, it's a, way more options, how to change, how to automatically calculate, you know, but I, I think it's limited time, so I want to go to the next topic. And yeah, just have... what, what, one more question before. Uh, sure. Is it possible to show and off dimensions line, lines? So I don't know if I implement in this one. Let me just check very fast. Towers, towers. Great food. Uh, so for this one, for a towers, uh, by default is not implemented, but I will show a next example where yeah. I even include in Grasshopper. But you can, uh, because we talk about this one, you can see that we include a lot of points everywhere, just to snap. It could be line, it could be point. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, of course, in Tecla, you have that option. There is my floating table. 
you can just say I don't want to see construction lines and everything is gone. Yeah. And it looks so super this is a clean, filter. Fast. So, yeah. So uh, it's not fully filter. It's just you know like display option. Yeah, display from, option. Yeah. Ah. From view properties. Can so, you show again how you how you act so fast? This uh, visible option. Uh, ah, it's here on the video. And, um... Yeah. So you have this I symbol. You click here and you say construction line. I'm activating and it's appearing. Or now, or now I old... now I now I learn something here. <laughs> <laughs> or of course, old way, double click. Go yeah, to I've been doing I've been doing yeah. that, and it's like five clicks uh, instead of and... two. Uh, I prefer two <laughs> clicks instead of even even I'm always used to go modify apply. Okay, so it's even. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, with Grasshopper, it also could be tricky that you need to not forget something just to apply before you inserting something. And after when you modify. But answering the question, so it's possible to turn off in the Grasshopper. Yes. Oh, okay. So let's let's yeah. jump to the second one. Sure. And I immediately show because I remember that I think I implemented this one, this one. Uh, and now if I go Control P, you know, just one, just to see. Maybe first I should show a bit how it's at least so. Uh, that's like system, whereas like Tocaplex, simple one, you know, like when you have uh, secondary beams, primary beams, and props, and it's like super customizable, uh, so very common one at the same time, easy to assemble in a field. And what Tecla did, of course, they did a slab lacing tool, what is really cool and save a lot of time for us. But even with that, uh, we see some improvements what we can do you know like because maybe docker product is work a bit different maybe uh it's in the future what they plan to implement and they didn't do yet so first i just grabbing one uh primary beam holding control and this is tecla functionality just normal direct modification like always i just drag it outside so it will be a bit simple to more simple to explain so you see i just have normal one if you select and i even can show here former girder line so this is this tool here mm -hmm. uh, and applied uh, we can also apply to that one also grasshopper so you remember when first i say oh we can do with the points or with the line in this case we interact with another placing tool of tecla and mm -hmm. let me just reload it click i look in upper uh, on our bottom left and it say pick a component so of course i'm picking this one Let's wait a bit, and in a few seconds, I should get all my props automatically placed by auto prop spacing, start of set, end of set, and even I can choose different heights. And normal tool have this functionality, but don't have middle props option. So that's why we see, oh, we definitely users spend a lot of time to move something, to copy something. So that's a good opportunity to improve, you know, like and make it way more faster. And in this case, you can see that this is start, we see 3.9, you know, like, or here is like four. four. And we imp implement show distance text. So if I select my props and I say false, it's automatically reloading. So it's keeping all this, my props, blocked together, like I show in the start, mm -hmm. but, but the distance is not there anymore. Okay. Uh, so, techni so technically uh, speaking, so you are picking the component and inside Grasshopper, you are deconstructing this component uh, into beams maybe first, and then deconstructing uh, this beam into curves, and then you are dividing, placing the points and so on. Very similar, like this is because this is component. So when you deconstruct, you get, you know, like what elements inside and what mm -hmm. is input. And if you, you're getting a component and component, because this beam here, this beam here, so you can automatically know what is space between, you know, okay. like so. And and the tool out, and even if you go one level deeper, if you hold shift and one, and now I'm one level deeper, you can see that this is really replacing another placing tool on this one. What is also provided by Tecla with, mm -hmm. with components. So if I click two times, I will see interface of a placing tool. Yeah, I, so I can see. We are constructing placing another. <laughs> so it's kind of inception. It's a component in the component. 
Uh, I have one example where it's grasshopper and grasshopper components, so that will be <laughs> better. <laughs> so so uh, you, you can you can go really crazy with that. Oh yeah, that's that's I'm sure. But I I forgot to go with a simple example in a start. So but I show it now. <laughs> so let me just delete this one. So another let's end up limitation, but how we can speed up things. Uh, you can see that I just um, uh, this is like secondary beams, and of course you can move it, or if you hold control, you can copy one more. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do all this straight, you know, like uh, slab, so we create another very simple script where you just, let me just delete this too. And when you just select this one, you say, what is distance? How many you want copies, number of copies? And if you want to left or right, you know. And after that, let's just wait a few seconds. You get something like a, you know, block, and even some text also here if you. So it's some kind of similar. We have this function to copy uh, in Tecla. Uh, we have that, uh, but and... well, as a mm -hmm. like, like as a distance, you you give a vector and you make a how many times. But I, I see that it's more. Uh, more complicated because you are adding more, more more tools to that. Yeah, so sadly, not all because uh, displacing tools, especially for walls and slab, the normal move linear or copy linear mm -hmm. works. So okay. that's why we implement that one. But uh, if I go one more time, one level deeper, just one, now I can select this one and now I can hold and drag. So I not de destroy my block, mm -hmm. but I have another one. Which one I say? Oh, maybe that's a column or something, you know, like, and it's automatically adjusted. I can see. So, so it's yeah. it's a block, but all the all of them are sep you can separate uh, it's them inside its main inside. logic. Yeah. yeah, and because not every branch will show all these beams because it's overload drawing, we also have additional functionality to include some filters. To show or not to show so yeah. that's a bit but yeah so that was like what was the second example with the interaction with the placing tool with existing tecla development things and it could be with everything what they did you know, like all custom components and so on and so on do we have more questions yeah we have lots of uh question uh let me see uh, how to redefine coordinate system inside grasshopper scripts to make my planes made by points rotate along mm, with main part uh have you been working with that uh, because so, in 2000 in in one i think 14 it was introduced the get coordinate system component yep. All the scripts what are showing with with the coordinate systems. Before I used C sharp, it was like really bad because it depends of the version you need to have also Grasshopper different versions. So I mean I I open one even if I plan to show in the end, but that's like perfect time now to to show it. Like this is 10k what I already show, and I always do this one. This is like my my standard. Uh, so script, you're starting. You know? So you're always starting with that one. I mean, I first thinking what is inputs, what is outputs, mm -hmm. and after I always copy this one. So I, what is my input? I get coordinate, and I always make with telepathy, you know, x, y, and z. And because we always using custom components, so whatever you inserting, for example, in this case, if I show this one here, so that's my x, that's my y, and that's my z direction. So this is like how i'm like to do you know like and after you especially with telepathy you don't i mean I'm, you can see that this is everywhere mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everywhere you know like maybe why it's not that crazy but so that's like at least how i i see it 1.16 or 1.4 they change a bit so i'm not sure you know how it will be with 2024 but but most of time it's very simple adjustment that you say oh maybe this is you can already see here but i say minus y something mm -hmm. changed uh, let okay. me see. i have more question let me see uh, do you it's more for doca and do you share your grasshopper scripts with daca customers uh so of course if we sign not disclosure agreement and we work together yes we're sharing 
it depends on search. Sometimes we just create for client the script <laughs> if they need something. <laughs> Yeah, you can continue. Okay, cool. So, the next one, it's let me make it solid. Um, more a bit, it will be uh, not transparency anymore. And next one is high rise system. It's a MEF 240 where you climbing up in a shafts most of time. But yeah, so just you know, like to show. And what you before uh, present in a um, in a LinkedIn, if somebody saw about direct modification, so this is a really good example, you know, like how we see the combination of a direct modification and mm -hmm. plus uh, grasshopper components. So our trick, what we're doing here, and of course, like I can just select this one, say get, I get, I refresh, and I get new new script, I hope. Or if not, I just go three dots and just select manually. Okay, so, but before that, you remember when I show, hey, this is point, this is polyline, this is Correct. a beam, you know. So now example with a beam or polybeams. And the simple thing, just come come to the polybeam and our all, you know, Docker users doing that. Just say, this is my edge, uh, this is my first bracket, maybe this is second bracket, and this is my end. So with this one, I already have these distances here, mm -hmm. and my insertion point on 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 on. Let me just click apply to make sure on this script, just this beam. And let's wait a few more seconds. We try to keep not more than ten seconds to script to reload. You know, like with performance, and we already get a lot of different elements. And the coolest part about that, that for example, now if we have six here, you can use normal direct modification and say, oh, maybe it's a seven, you know. So in a few seconds, the right one will move, script reload, and everything will be updated. I can see. Uh, so it's really powerful uh, for combining Tecla direct modification with just component that you are not creating the new one. You're just because you're you're holding the same elements, right? Like the uh, IDs, uh, GU IDs. Yes, that's right. That's right. Right. Uh, I mean, we can. You can also. Uh, that's a good question. So, for example, now if I have this one and I just jump to platforms, I can also say, oh, maybe I don't need in this case plus one, and I just go minor uh, like false, and this is gone. So. In this case, if you re reload your script, it will be with new elements. So if you do assemblies, you will have problems. But if you do GA, you okay, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, so you can imagine that this is like, and of course, like always, we implement a lot of different options, what to change, how to change, and so on, so on. But now another thing that you can reference Grasshopper component with Grasshopper component. And I'm going to MF240 platforms. Let's just wait a few more seconds. And you see, that's not a lot of uh, options. But what I can do now, I can just click and select everywhere where is this component. Let's click, for example, here. And I'm grabbing all information from my older component and analyzing it and placing platforms on top. Because platforms could be very customizable and mm -hmm. a lot of options so i can even explode and start editing if i want you know uh but in the same time you not you know like make it so heavy that it takes uh, i don't know 20 seconds to ge generate i mean you know for it is five minutes and people happy but but you know <laughs> so, so so i can see that to save the time for computing time you prefer to create smaller scripts that make smaller tasks and just That's apply right. it one after one uh, it's a really great approach. Uh, just one, one question from uh, Harsh. Uh, so you have created just a poly beam. You don't have to pick the concrete wall, right? Yes, uh, I'm. I'm just snapping poly beam. That's all. Probably. Like, uh, yeah. But like I said, in formwork, you know, we always analyzing geometry and try to apply our solution. So if you're designing walls, that could be a bit different for flow, let's say. 
<laughs> if you design yeah. structure. And about the direct modification, are you talking about the C sharp API? We we did some some you know testing uh, with C sharp, but we see that most of functionality is enough just to reuse poly beams, plates, what I just tried to show in the start, you know, or even curve mm -hmm. beams, you know, like so we try to in overall, if you think about, you know, like uh, if script is done, if you transfer everything to C sharp, I, I guess it will be better, faster, and you know, like mm -hmm. even more sophisticated. But just like uh, you know, like not so. You need a lot of resource for that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So just come back to this one. Like I say, this is. Grasshopper custom component, I reference on top of this one. But if I modify now my source, which source is, of course, Polybeam, you know. But let's say, for example, I just show that maybe one example. Uh, let's say maybe it's first level and we need to rotate our, our this minus one platform. Mm -hmm. So now I just click modify with 60 degrees. So it's changing this one and also trigger my platforms and in a few seconds this one also will be updated i hope like always yeah finger finger crossed crossed <laughs> uh, for now everything worked uh, perfectly <laughs> uh, oh, black uh, black uh, <laughs> black screen so it's not the uh, good side but yeah but we can see it's working yeah, it's it's sometimes so that's why you know like it's it's at least you place you can even explode you know and so on and so on but i want to say you know like that's why i know change this point because it triggered two scripts additionally you know like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yeah so and the last example of this mf240 that we have another case that for example we need to brace and it depends of a lot of cases what is going in a field uh so let me just get like always Let's refresh. And this is very simple one, but that's just very, very small tool what you can you know, do in half an hour and it could save a lot of time for your engineers. So mm -hmm. for example, um, I click this one and my input is polyline. So that's why I always referencing to that start. And let's say I'm snacking po snapping point. You can see how easy snap points when you have in custom. Component. Yeah, I really, I, I really like. I, I want to, I, I want to also just point it out <laughs> because of this point. It's really cool way. Like you are placing that to snapping, and it's it work it works so easy that you are not just placing the holes that are circular. You are just in placing the points with the grasshopper. And that's it. You can just redraw it, and and I can imagine that they are if you are changing uh, the distance between uh, let's say inputs, so the points will also move and so on. That's right. And the cool thing about points that you can see, even if it's not transparency, you can also see that point here and snap. Mm -hmm. it. So that's why sometimes we're using lines like in this direction, and sometimes we're using points like here. Let's say, and I click one more, and because this is polyline. Let's go somewhere here and just use one more. Okay, middle mouse button. And we get already uh, braces here. So like I say, that's not be even hard to place with few elements, you know, like uh, manually. But the main thing depends of this, you know, like space. You also need this coupler to adjust, you know, with a nice angle and nice position. So this script save a lot of time for, for users and of course if you see how oh, something is not working which one is diagonal i think is this one you can just say modify and this one automatically moves recalculate and you can see that this everything perfectly fine cool uh, people are asking what kind of example you decided to share uh light version of a 10k okay which <laughs> which what which, which was that one uh, it was this guy. Great. So, people, is that the basic setup that you are deconstructing local system? Is it included there? That's right. That's right. So, yeah, Ashley. So, you are uh, answering the question. So, we we are going to send that uh, in tomorrow mail. Mm -hmm. 
Let me uh, see. So maybe maybe last example, and we'll go to questions. Okay. So I I guess I will show this one because this is even you know like um, uh, let me think very fast. So that's very similar. I just show only one and come back to that script, which just give a bit overview that people understand you know like what's going on. So I mean you can see that this is like one script. That's another script. That's even two scripts together connecting by this part like but i not show it a lot i only want to show this platforms because it's one more different idea maybe how people can use it uh, grasshopper so in this case i will try to find icp platforms let's wait a few more seconds and this one we calling like playground because when we inserting a platform you not get you know assemble all together but it will i hope it not crashed nope perfect but it's more like whatever you need you choosing you know mm -hmm. like so you just have everything blocked together right click explode component and now it's everything like single custom components and i just show a few examples for example this one you know like you can say oh maybe i need and really, you know, like, so that's normal custom component function, oops, uh, functionality, just to include something, but what you can do fully with Tecla, or let's say, for example, this one, maybe we need some, you know, like, let's say something like this one. So now it's a bolts appearing, and you can see also this one somewhere here. And that's what we did with this one that is really a lot of custom components. So this one, it's also here, it's also here. It, we try to align with a similar level and people start moving, assemble, depends on the situation. And if you have questions about this one, that's for cutting. Okay, so that, just to summarize. So this is kind of a template that you are using uh, for giving to your maybe customers. It's like, okay, you are using, this is the type of the formwork just placing exploding and then you can just use it yeah it's it's because this platform is so customizable but it's really hard to create you know like one script so they say until we come up with something better here is like you don't need to know what is name of of one component or another one we arrange everything together and people can start you know like do a job make assemblies yeah, because it's always like a problem with the sending the data so you're just sending grasshopper file that's right. Huh. That and is really interesting. So you're not sending like elements. So now you're just sending a file or, or the script and then yeah, you're but, implementing, you have all the elements. Yeah, it's because it's already in doc environment. So yeah. that's right. That's cool. That's cool. Interesting. Uh, would you like to show something more or should we go directly to questions? Um, so I just thinking what what is going with our time? Uh, it's fifteen minutes more, eh? Yeah. So maybe we can uh, we can just jump to just jump questions. to questions. Yeah. yeah uh, so no just uh, just to answering. So yeah, we are going to share one of the Tautavida script. Uh, so he's going to share with us, and of course, you are more than welcome to uh, go to Docker website and search for the Docker component and start using. If you still haven't registered, so for go to learngrosshopper.com slash workshop tecla uh, component. And uh, already it was question. Uh, I was uh, like, let me see. I had to open that uh, question. If this uh, from Acuna, uh, Gabriel, is it possible to create automatic drawing in Tecla using Grasshopper? So this is answer for your question. Yes, it's possible. Uh, Greg Olszewski has implemented, has created an open source plugin uh, for creating drawings in Tecla. So uh, he will be my guest in April. Uh, so please uh, register. His registration is open already. LearnGrasshopper.com slash workshop Tecla drawing. So we are going to talk about drawings uh are you still making lots of drawing talk to videos oh yeah it's a lot of drawings in our company yeah. have you uh, have so you have I'm you used this have you used this plugin already or it's I, i'm testing really uh, if not maybe every version because he upgraded very yeah. very frequent you know like so 
but every like one month i spend one hour at least to see what's new what's going on and if he introduced also grasshopper custom component i'm fully i'm sure that i will use it later. and also uh, i spoke with greg uh, yesterday uh, also he started work to implement the same uh, component grasshopper component for drawings so we can also it will be possible in future to create own tools uh, like uh, custom components, Grasshopper components for drawing. So really looking uh, forward to this one. So really, uh, this I'm really looking forward to this one. Not that many people know that Grasshopper can be used for drawings. And our aim is to make this more popular. And maybe you will be, you will more than welcome because we are going to go through uh, the last implementation. So Tato Vidas, you are, uh, you're invited there as well. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, okay. Uh, so let me go to questions. Let me see. Uh, maybe I can still uh, share us. Uh, let me see. So we have. Um, let me see. We already answered that. So we need a Rhino license if you would like to use the uh, co component. Uh, Rens from Belgium uh, using the Grasshopper component already with Docker components. So we have uh, seen that. Uh, Victor, how manipulate components uh, direction? Plus x, pl minus x, plus y, minus 1, et cetera. Yeah, so that's like uh, this, uh, how it's called, uh, component that construct uh, plates. No, no, don't mm -hmm. give, give me a second. Like get coordinate system and and global or local, I always like to deconstruct the plate. And after that, just go to vectors. And of course, after so, some super simple, just you know, you have your input of curve, uh, you go with the move and let's say amplitude, and you can manipulate in plus minus or or your any value you want. And this is any curve. Uh, in addition, when we are inserting components, we have this uh, ZS uh, Sutuna. It's a Z direction in Finnish. Uh, if I I, I I think that my pronunciation is bad, but but if you are imp implementing a component through the Tecfa Live link, so you can just change this parameter to change uh, the direction. Uh, let me oh, see. Oh, for plates, you mean? Uh, no, no, for I components. Guess. For components. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah, I guess, I guess you talk about this one is. Yes? Correct. Uh, oh. Correct. Uh, let me see more question. Um, how to assign a separate profile for each element of the truss list of elements? So this is the first question. So like, like this is the easy answer. If you have five elements, if you've created a list of five profiles, uh, so you can assign that. Uh, I think uh, as you can see here, like th this is the same idea as we can see on the picture right now. When you are selecting components, which one you are, would like to select the same, you can select the list of several uh, profiles. Mm -hmm. And how to write a logical condition if or else. Uh, so they are also like stream gate uh, component, a stream filter. And also like, yeah, lots of components, some stream filter and lots of and or, so you can create whatever you would like to have. Uh, let me see uh, more. Uh, is Grasshopper developed so far already to be able to use bolts and welds inside Grasshopper component? So at least what I know that you need to use component and application components in Tecla and, and like Autobolt, like Autobolt, yeah, yeah Autobolt. Yeah. But it's... but uh, I had a meeting with Sebastian yesterday, and they start are going to implement that in the future releases. So. Now they've been working with the rebar sets, but next on the timeline is the bolt, and maybe it will be weld. So uh, let's have finger crossed. Um, here, a question from Andrea, and it will be nice to see your perspective. Uh, how do you feel where is the reasonable border for such automatization in Grasshopper? Is it for two, three, ten, hundred 10, 100 similar projects? What is your opinion about that? That's that's a good question. You know, like sometimes it could be just two. Sometimes <laughs> you have one hundred. You know, but uh, mm. uh, for me, I I see more like you know, like if we have like at least uh, three, four branches or users who are using that system, 
and they're willing to use in Tecla, you know, that's the way where I start implementing things like this. Yeah, I, I think that there is no just a standard border where it should be, uh, but it's always when you are going to implement that in the future, you can reuse that. So even if you are using for maybe two things in the one month, so maybe in the future you can come back and you also train your skills. This is also really important to start automation uh, with the simple example, but train uh, train your skills. Uh, can we use Grasshopper in Tecla as a connection component for existing elements? So we try not to use it, but of course it's possible. You know, uh, I don't have experience with this details or connection with with Grasshopper Live Link, or at least any any example I show is not not there. You know, but I know that it's possible. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. I've been using a lot. So all the components, all the connection components, application that you have, you can just reuse it and it works really, uh, pretty, uh, really pretty well. Um, are you going to show a component for rebars concrete? Uh, I think that RTV does is working mostly with the steel, but uh, but just answering the question, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's possible to implement for all the rebars uh, the same way. Uh, just for example, are you inserting some specific reinforcement of the edge, for example, of the beam or the hollow core? Of course, it is uh, it is possible. Uh, we have question uh, in your opening Docker images. There was a lot of high rise co uh, cocoon drone shots. Are these grasshopper tools used by you Docker teams to model these uh, complicated cocoon cocoons? I think it's cocoons would docker share uh, these uh, models uh so normally of course we're not sharing maybe you know like some comparison with the pictures but uh mm -hmm. i'm i don't think so that i was involved in any of this with grasshopper <laughs> so i guess answer no <laughs> yeah uh, Marco, in order to define the inputs in Grasshopper component, does the group of elements in Grasshopper should have a specific settings or is just a group of elements at the beginning of the script? It's supposed to be a name, right? Yes, you. if you not think, like you, because you can have different tabs on every Grasshopper component, so every group represents a, a, a tab. But let's say three groups with the same name, they will put in the, in the same order on, a, on it from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see there is more um, is it possible to create custom connections uh, yeah in my opinion so you can use the same components in the same uh, but I don't I'm not sure if you can edit already created one um, so at least if you want to edit custom component that's not a simple way with grasshopper what we discussed before you know like yeah so if it's this direction, it's it's it will be hard. Uh, but if it's just play something additional, it, of course it's possible. Oh, this is a good question. Uh, thank you, Andres, for this one. Uh, what is modeling automatization lever for tech uh, tech like guys in Docker? Meaning, is there a lot of additional manual adjustment? So let's say that you, we have you have lots of tools. You have you showed us today lots of Grasshopper script. And um, so how is the workflow? Uh, how the guys are guys and girls, of course, are working in that? Uh, so it's also really depends of a system uh, for someone who, you, you know, like you just need to put some dimensions in the drawings of a grasshopper script and you you good to go. Uh, but for something more complicated, of course, like it's let's say we cover maybe 20 percent or 30 percent and and sometimes you can even see that it makes sense to do one more grasshopper script just to speed up process. So mm -hmm. it depends on scale and systems. <laughs> uh, do you know maybe when the native component of Docker uh, with the user defined attributes to come to the Tecla warehouse? Uh, we working with uh, also our IT guys. Uh, so let's see, or we go to Tecla warehouse, or it will be warehouse and plus Docker website. Uh, I don't want to promise anything. I hope until end of this year. <laughs> uh, we have Augustas, one of our uh, students of Grasshopper Fundamentals. Great uh, greetings from Lithuania. Amazing script, great solution. So great work. I think that people too. like. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see this one. 
Uh, let me see the user. Uh, quick question about uh, what is easier to compute for Tecla uh, imported shape for the same form, but made with native Tecla instruments? So in a model mode, we not recognize any big difference. The biggest difference in a drawing mode. Mm -hmm. uh, so in drawing is way, way more faster if everything is native and you're not using shapes. Uh, Harsh, uh, when we are using the component in Tecla, it is compulsory to open Rhino and Grasshopper. No, uh, we already showed that if you're using co component, it's in the silent mode. So we don't uh, need to uh, open uh, that one. Let me see, go to live. Um, uh, do you have scripts for generating bill of quantities? Question from Francesco. I think uh, Tecla already have a good, you know, like uh, uh, let's say organizer or reports and also in a drawing with template editor of tools. So most of time we we using native Tecla functionality to export to our internal database. But if you if you would like to, of course, it's possible to, to create bill of quantities and export it to Excel as you want, as you wish with the, all the elements. So if you are familiar with grasshoppers, of course, you can create your own build quantities. Mm. Do you run uh, into issues when changing Tecla versions? From Let's say today we have released 2024. Uh, I know that something has to be changed in 2024, as far as I know. <laughs> uh, really, with every version, uh, at least from Grasshopper component and Lively, I see that it's becoming better and better. It's really the Tecla improve a lot in that one. But of course, something like coordinate system, some new things. So you need to spend some time to adjust your scripts. The, the mm. really good thing that uh, with Grasshopper custom component, even if you're using, let's say, 2021 version in your background, it works for lower versions. Upgrade. It's you not need to replace files, so that's really big benefit too. Uh, Victor, uh, he is modeling uh, trusses with the two thousand uh, elements, and his computer is dying uh, because it's computing time. Do you have maybe any tips for Victor? Maybe it's a shape, so I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, that one one uh, tower what i show it was already like 700 parts you know like and mm -hmm. at least i don't have a big problems uh but in 2023 i saw also in a modeling modest improvement really so i hope in 2024 it will be even better <laughs> so uh, advices so first of all you use native elements second of all divide scripts into smaller parts uh, and yeah, maybe invest in better machine. I don't know what is the, <laughs> um, and to use maybe the newest version of Tecla because they are faster and faster from, uh, from the newest. Um, will you show the steps to publish a grasshopper script into a Tecla component, including how to make tabs in the form? So we, uh, Tautavidas is going to share the script. So it's going to be shown, uh, like easy steps in this grasshopper file, right? right? We don't That's have to go right. through that. Uh, let me see. I think it's uh, all of the question and we are exactly on time. So if I haven't answered your question and you are really would like to get answer from me or from Tarte Vidas, uh, just uh, let us know. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was pleasure to guest you and I hope to see you more and uh, maybe we can after a couple of months or even in the year we you can uh, you can show some really good work of the doca and your team maybe more into project specific uh, we have uh, arturas maybe it's your one of your fr friend uh, from linkedin let's say answer this question let's say we have a predefined base point in tecla for convenience work in the coordinates how do you make sure that Tecla Grasshopper coordinates match and script object are in the right place? Uh, so if I understand correct, like I always, we always do a script where we doing insertion points, um, mm -hmm. like or a show point, polyline, beam or something. So 
that's where how I get this coordinate system and on top of that placing everything like at all logic. Uh, maybe I'm not sure one thing, but you even can move and rotate your grasshopper script and it will be okay, you know, like so mm -hmm. that could be one more case. Okay, amazing. I learned a lot of this uh, uh, from you guys. Uh, we have thanks for the nice presentation. Uh, oh, I think lots of you. Uh, have, you, have, you uh, have you have you invited all of your friends here? <laughs> <laughs> With LinkedIn helps, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, again, uh, I hope to see uh, all of you in the next workshop for now. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good one. And yeah, see you in the next workshop. Again, thank you very much for your presentation and great work in DECA. Uh, let's continue that with the new TechLab 2024 and see the results. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Have a nice